Hi, I'm Christopher, and welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast. This episode is all about dying with bugs. So sit back, grab your favorite drink, and let's start dying. Cochinelle is great for dyeing, and it actually has a fantastic history to it as well. We can thank the Maya people going back 2000 BC for dyeing with, with Cochinelle. And it, Cochinelle became so popular in the 17th century that it was traded all over the world. And it was even listed on the Commodity Exchange uh, in London and Amsterdam as well. Very, very important. It was actually Mexico's second most important uh, export right after silver. So it has a great history to it. Um, we, when we think about the red coats, the British red coats, their coats were actually dyed with, with cochinilla as well. So very, very important um, in the history of natural dyeing. What we're going to do today is I'm going to dye with cochineal. I'm going to talk about what we need in order to dye with cochineal. And the process to make the dye bath is a little bit different as well. So we'll focus on that and, and we'll dye some yarn. So let's go over what it is that we need in order to dye with cochineal. We need the cochineal itself. And they're fascinating. They're really, these little bugs, um, really interesting. I'll show you what happens when you, when you crunch them up, but I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up or not. But they grow on the prickly pear cactus in Central America and South America. And um, it's, it's really interesting once you grind them up, and we'll, I'll show you what that looks like, and then add water. So, um, you also need a shirt you need or proper clothing when you're dying because this stuff gets everywhere or can get everywhere if you're not careful. So, and I'd also recommend that you have a cloth, just a, a spare cloth with you as well to wipe up as, as you go along because you don't want to let it sit. I'll be using a mordant to bind the color to the yarn. And for this, or for today, I'm going to be using alum and I'm also going to be using cream of tartar. I'll be using them both. And a couple things really impact the color with cochineal. One of them is the pH level of, of your water that you're using. The other is the mordant that you're using. And so with the colors that I have, or the mordant that, I'm, that I have, I'm anticipating that we'll get a reddish, purplish color to it. You will also need a, something to grind up the cochineal. So these are great. I picked this up at a secondhand store. So it's a coffee bean grinder. And you can pick them up for next to nothing at a secondhand store. Um, so if you're gonna do that, Cochineal Dine, I, I rec strong, strongly recommend picking one of these up. You will also need either a small pot. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to, when I figure out how much Cochineal I need, I'm going to, um, grind it and then put it in this pot and then I'm going to put I'm going to put three inches of water above it and I'm going to let it boil for 30 minutes. You also need a strainer um, and you'll see why we need this. Um, and then measuring spoons are always useful when you're measuring or trying to figure out how much alum to use, how much uh, cochineal to, to use as well. And so oh, the other thing that you'll need is cheesecloth cheesecloth and I've got an elastic band that I that I will use when I put the cheesecloth over the strainer. So today I'm going to probably dye five skeins just to start off. So what I want to do is I want to figure out how much cochineal I should use and it's really potent. So I would say probably around 3% of the total weight of the yarn that you're doing and this is dry yarn not wet yarn. So you figure out how much yarn you're going to do and then take um, the, so they take the grand total weight of that and then 3% of that will be your the amount of cochineal that you need. And the really interesting thing about making a dye bath with cochineal is that we're going to be going through a process and it's a, it takes a little bit of time. What we want to do is we want to get the cochineal first and figure out how many um, how much cochineal we need. So I figured out that I, pro that I need roughly 
two tablespoons. And so I'm going to do a couple things. One, I will use the coffee grinder, show you what that looks like, coffee bean grinder, and then I'm also going to uh, mix it up and show you what it looks like in here as well. So I'll put one tablespoon in here, I'll put a tablespoon and a half. So I've got that, I've got that in the coffee grinder. I, I do it probably four or five times until I can't hear any any of the bugs spinning around anymore. Probably do it two more times. You can also wear a mask um, if you want to. When I lift this up, you could see that there was powder floating up. So, and there it is again. So it's probably a good idea to, to wear a mask when you're doing this, if you're doing a lot because uh, you don't want to inhale it as much. So, not sure this is going to show up, but it's I've got a powder here, and it's it's um, a really nice powder. What I'll do is I'll grind some up in here as well. Just do half a teaspoon. So it doesn't look like much other than ground bugs right now, but it's really interesting when you add a little bit of water to it. And instantly you get a red color. This is a gorgeous red color. Uh, that's fantastic. It turns red immediately. So I'm not sure if you can, if the camera can pick that up or not. Also put some on the plate so you can see the red color and how it's come out. That color is absolutely beautiful. And I took this out of the, I've got a water softener on my sink. Um, and then I've got one, I can get water, pull water without the water softener. Um, I can tell you when I did this um, without the water softener, the color was a purple and, and I've got a red coming out of this one. So it was really interesting. Okay, so that's pretty much done. I'm going to put this into my pot, clean it out. I don't want to waste any of it. You can also wear gloves. That I usually remember that after I get my fingers dirty. I'm going to wash this right away though, so... Okay, so I've got the... I've got the cochineal in here, part of it, and I'm going to put the rest of it in, the powder. And now I'm going to add three inches of water in here. So the, the cochineal is, lives on the, the cactus, the prickly pear cactus, and in order to get it off the cactus, it usually resides on the um, pad of, of the cactus, and so it's just swept off, and that's how it's collected. And what I'm doing now is I'm bringing the uh, dye pot to a boil, and I want to let it boil for 30 minutes. And you know, that's one of the differences between dyeing the um, cochineal and using botanicals because some of the botanicals if you were to boil it it would turn brown uh, because some of them are very sensitive to temperature but the kosher no we want to boil that we want to let it boil for 30 minutes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil it for 30 minutes 
And then I'm gonna get my strainer ready. I'm gonna get my strainer ready. And I'm gonna put cheesecloth on it. Cheesecloth works quite well, um, I find, when I'm straining. So what I wanna do is I want to, I don't want any of the pulp to get into my dye bath. And so what I will do is I will put the cheesecloth on the strainer because it's a little, the holes are smaller. Um, and again, I don't want any of the pulp in my dye bath because I don't want it getting on the yarn. If it if it's on the yarn in your dye bath, if you've got pieces of it, chunks of it, what will happen is it will turn that piece of yarn or that's darker than, than the others. And I don't want that to happen. I want it to have it as uniform as possible across. So I get I have this. Um, I take my, an elastic and I put that around my strainer and this strainer I picked up at the at um, a secondhand store as well. Mostly everything I have or I use is, is secondhand. So I've got that ready, ready for my boiling. And the process is going to look like this. We're going to boil for 30 minutes and then I will put this over my dye pot and I'll strain it and I want to collect the pulp. I'll take the pulp, I'll put it back in the pot and then I will fill up another three inches and I will boil it again and I'll do that three times. And then I'll have my the dye bath for, for the yarn. So it's a lot different than in a couple of ways than um, dyeing with uh, botanicals because one of the things is we're boiling it and when you dye with botanicals you can destroy the color because a lot of it is a lot of botanicals are heat sensitive this one not so much so we're gonna boil it and we're gonna do it three times um, because you can really get a lot of the cochineal pulp and so and we want to save that and you can also save it after your third time you can put it on a plate you can put it on a dish and just keep it let it dry I mean you can use it again as well it's it's really potent so, um, so that's, that's why we're going through this process. So, so we've got heat, which is definitely one of the um, pieces or, of the process that differentiates it from dyeing with botanicals. But we also have the process of, of boiling and dyeing it down and then gathering the pulp, putting it back in, adding a, a, three inches of water, boiling it again, um, putting it through the strainer, collecting the pulp and doing it again. That's, that's much different than dyeing with botanicals. So we'll get through that process and then um, it's, it'll be time to add our mordant. I mentioned earlier that in the 17th century, cochineal was so popular and it was exported all over the world. And in the 19th century, with the introduction of synthetic colors, um, it basically killed the cochineal industry. And, um, and so, what had happened was um, where we once used cochineal to create colors, it was a lot easier to have synthetic colors generated or, or created a um, lot, lot more ex um, cost effective as well to, to, to use that. The problem is cochineal was used in foods. It still is used in foods today in cosmetics. And so when they substitute that with um, color that is synthetic color, what happens is some people are allergic to it. And there's a growing number of people that are allergic to it. And so what's happening now is they're seeing uh, more of an interest uh, to go back to cochineal. And cochineal dyeing definitely wouldn't be something that uh, vegans would be interested in. Uh, but also I would encourage people when they look, if uh, and, and people who are vegan already know this, but uh, look at what you're eating and look at the ingredients of, of what you're eating. Um, and if there's red in it, try to look and see what color generates that red. Is it a synthetic dye or is it uh, the cochineal bug? Because they use both today. I've let the cochineal boil for 30 minutes and now it's ready to strain. So I've got my cheesecloth over top of my strainer because I want to keep all the pulp. So I'll just put this in.
and you can see you can see all the pulp that is still in the pot and there's just a little bit of it on the cheesecloth but most of it has stayed in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up again three inches I'm going to put the pulp that's on my cheesecloth back into black back into my pot and then I'm going to let it boil for 30 minutes and I'm going to do that um, one additional time and so that'll be three times that, it, that it's boiled and then we'll be ready to add the mordant and start dyeing. So I'm back and we've gone through the process three times now where I've brought the cochineal and three inches of water up to a boil, let it boil for 30 minutes, did that three times and I've strained it and put it into this dye pot. So this is what I have now. I've got the remains of it. I've got the dye pot. So this contains um, the processing, processing of the cochineal three times. And so now I'm ready to put my mordant in. And I've got my alum, which I have pre-measured. And the alum is going to be 10% of the weight of the yarn. And then my cream of tartar is going to be 5% of the total dry yarn. And so now what I'm going to do is I, I like to mix it in a container. So I'll just put some cochineal in here and then I'm going to add my alum to it. And just shake that up. I find it mixes a lot easier if I, if I just put it in a mason jar and shake it up and then I'll pour it into my dye pot. Yeah, that's about good. Yeah, it looks mixed. I don't see any residue. Now I'm going to add the cream of tartar and I'll shake this up You can tell the cream of tartar really uh, changed. It brought it a little bit lighter. Now that I have the alum and the cream of tartar in my dye pot, I'm going to let it sit for about 20 minutes. I'm going to heat it up, let it sit for about 20 minutes, and then I'm going to get my wet yarn and I'll put the wet yarn in the dye pot. I let it sit for about 20 minutes now and I'm going to put in my yarn. Should be ready. So this is Shetland wool and and I just wanted to emphasize again, you don't have to just dye white wool. You can dye uh, gray wool, I've dyed brown wool, uh, cream, uh, anything like that. And, and I find that the, the non-white really um, gives the color a, a specific characteristic to it. Looks nice. So we're going to put the gray Shetland wool in. Look how quickly the, it's taken color already. So I'm going to let this sit in for 20 minutes and then I'll check it and we'll go from there. I have the pot on a low heat because you don't want it you don't want it boiling when there's yarn in here because that can irritate or agitate the yarn and the yarn could felt and we don't want that. So it's been in for about 20 minutes. I'm going to take a peek and see. And again, this the, the wonderful thing about cochineal is that it when it has a mordant in it, it really binds to the to the yarn and it it the color is, is, is beautiful and it stays. It's one of the, the best uh, natural dyes to, to keep its color. Wow. Look at that color. It's a beautiful, beautiful purple. It's, it's, a, it's a richer, I'd say it's a richer tone than, than log, logwood. It's, it's quite nice. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I like to keep as much of this in the dye pot as possible. So I'll squeeze the yarn, try to get as much of the 
liquid out of the yarn as possible without damaging the yarn. And I look at the what I also do is just look at the coloring to see if it's it's even. And you have to remember the wet parts are going to appear darker than the than the drier parts of it. Uh, but it looks it looks very consistent. The other thing to check, which is very important, when you're tying up your yarn skeins, when you're putting them before you put them in, make sure that you check underneath. Because if you've tied if you've tied the skein um, too tightly around, uh, it will leave a mark, and you don't want to have a mark on your yarn. So just check underneath the the sections that were tied to make sure that um, the yarn was exposed to the to the dye. And this looks this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna take that out. So that's it. That's dyeing with with cochineau. I remember I, I mentioned earlier that the British red coats were dyed with cochineau, and I just pulled out yarn and it's purple. So what is that all about? Uh, well, a couple of things. The pH balance is, you have to look, watch your pH balance because it will have a direct impact on your color. And also the mordant that you use um, will have an impact on your color as well. You notice that when I put in the uh, cream, cream of tartar, it, it changed the color and made it lighter. Um, so if, if I put more of that in, it would have even uh, brought out a, a more reddish color. And again, when you take the yarn out and you look at it, uh, it's not necessarily going to be exactly that color after washing. So once you wash your yarn, um, you'll you probably have a close color. And again, Cochinelle really binds to the to the yarn, so it's going to be very close to the color that I just pulled out. So just to go over the the steps again, we basically uh, took the Cochinelle and we had three percent of the weight of the entire yarn, and we measure our yarn when it's dry, and not wet. And I ground it up in a coffee grinder and then poured it into a, you can pour it into a saucepan or a, another pot and add three inches of water, let it boil, put it into your dye pot um, after you've strained it. Go through that exercise again one more time and, and you can save the pulp after you're finished as well because um, it, it lasts, it lasts for, I'd say probably another usage you can get out of it. Um, and so once you do that, you put the, once you've gone through it three, three times and each time you brought it to a boil, um, you've got your dye pot created. And once your dye pot's created, you put the alum and you can put cream of tartar in as well. Um, if you like, there are a number of mordants that you can use. The, those are the ones that I chose today. Uh, and then you will add your, your yarn once you have mixed it up and let it sit for 20 minutes. Look at the yarn after 20 minutes. You can leave it in for an hour. You can leave it in for as long as you want. Uh, it all depends on the color. You can also put it in for a second um, dipping as well. So I'm gonna look at this after I wash it, see if I'm happy with it, and, and we'll go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, just fire them off to me either through Instagram or on YouTube, and I'm happy to answer them. Take care everyone and happy dying with bugs.